you. Now I request you to summarize all these points, his views on poetry, his views presented in the preface to Lyrical Ballads. Yeah, um, it's interesting. It's always important to sum up our ideas so that we have the uh, understanding in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 1798 is, is the important year uh, in which uh, the Lyrical Ballads was published. And the publication is important, but more important is Wordsworth's preface to it. The 1798 edition had an advertisement, a brief advertisement, in which uh, Wordsworth has uh, elaborated on elaborated his views on poetry and uh, diction of poetry, um, definition of poetry, etc. And then he revised it in 1800 edition and 1802 edition and uh, gave it a name of a preface. So that that is why this preface became the manifesto of uh, what came to be known as romantic poetry. That is why uh, the, the importance of this 1798 as a, as a year, as a milestone year. Uh, it began what we say uh, the romantic poetry. In fact, the transition had started much earlier. Poets of uh, the uh, um, precursors of romantic revival, uh, they were already writing a new kind of poetry new in the sense that it was different from the neoclassical poetry. So uh, beginning uh, is in the, uh, the seeds of beginning is uh, we find in the uh, poets of the precursors or poets that are known as precursors of romantic revival. And then we find the major uh, romantic poets, uh, Wordsworth, and then Coleridge, um, uh, Shelley, Keats, etc., Byron, etc. Okay, so, so sorry, uh, you want to say that Romanticism was in its full swing during the period when Wordsworth and Coleridge started yes, writing, or with their absolutely. arrival, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their, their arrival marks the, the zenith, the most uh, uh, um, successful period of romantic poetry, the most important period of romantic poetry. So that is why, the, the, and Wordsworth and Coleridge, they are the, uh, the, uh, the senior romantic poets. Shelley and Keats are considered to be the, the younger uh, romantic poets, but they were the most important exponents of uh, uh, romantic poetry. So it was not just a period, it was an ideology that was gradually developing. Yes, definitely. That was an emergen emergence and development of a new ideology. And uh, it was um, uh, propelled by the, uh, uh, by the French Revolution that took place the 10 years, the, a, a decade-long uh, agitation in, in, in France that led to the French Revolution and abolishment of uh, uh, monarchy. So that was a great, great event in, 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 in Europe and England was definitely influenced by it. It had a great impact on the social life of England and all the poets, writers and thinkers, they were uh, greatly influenced by the ideals of uh, uh, the French Revolution. There was, a, there was that desire, there was, the, there was that clamor for the uh, individual free will. There was this desire for equality. A, a, a kind of democratization of the society was taking mm -hmm. place. The common, was, uh, the common man was uh, gaining prominence or was clamoring for prominence and it was asking for its rights uh, in, in society. And a feudal order was giving way to a new democratic uh, order in which a common man is equally important or has equal rights. So many new things were happening. Women uh, were uh, um, aspiring to be uh, or, or they were clamoring for equality and in um, in France um, uh, Lady Wollstonecraft um, uh, vindicated the rights of women so so many th uh, new things were uh, happening it was a it was a beginning of a new era altogether the old feudal society was gradually giving way to a, a more humanitarian uh, democratic society uh, earlier church was very very um, powerful and it had a lot a, a, a great control over the uh, over society gradually a new society was uh, emerging in, w in which religion uh, was uh, being uh, 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 being uh, given a place which was due to it and it it had no um, interference with the daily life of common men so it was beginning of a of a new society Sir, if you have noticed, then we can observe, we can see the law of oscillation. Yes. That means pendulum. Yeah. So first, 
I think the first romantic period was the Elizabethan age. Yeah. Then we had the Puritan age. Yeah. And then again this romanticism. I mean to say, see, you can see classicism, romanticism, classicism, romanticism. So would you please throw some light on yeah, this? Yeah, that oscillation what is that we order? find. Yes, yeah. That oscillation we find it. We find a reactionary process. Uh, we may call it reactionary process, no, though not in a, in a derogatory uh, term. But yes, there is some, some sort of reaction. In, a, in another sense, if we look at it, it's a slow and gradual development to a new society that uh, ultimately uh, culminated in the democratic free uh, society of the 19th and 20th century. It started much earlier in the time of uh, uh, Chaucer when gradually uh, church was losing its hold on society. Uh, monarchy was gradually everywhere. Um, uh, uh, it was losing its grip on, um, on uh, political system. For instance, in uh, 1642, monarchy was overthrown in uh, England. Of course, it was restored in 1660. But uh, the period of uh, common, uh, Commonwealth rule or Cromwell rule as we uh, know it, that was the beginning of a new kind of government in which people have their voice. Mm -hmm. So that is, wha that is what we find. And then everywhere gradually monarchy was being replaced by a uh, more participatory um, uh, form of government. So yes, and uh, uh, during this process of uh, transformation of society, we find that uh, there is some sort of oscillation. But then there is again difference. For instance, uh, in the in the um, uh, Elizabethan period, we find that uh, period we usually consider to be the Renaissance period. Mm -hmm. So we find the romanticism there. But that romanticism is different uh, from the romanticism that we find in the age of in Wordsworth, the, uh, in, the, in the age of Wordsworth, uh, in the earlier part of the 19th century, because here man is now at the center. Hmm. The uh, the individual, the common man, is now at the center, and. That romanticism that we find during the Elizabethan age was uh, also uh, uh, in, a, in a, a kind of literature that uh, believed in imagination, that did not believe in any kind of uh, classical rules. We find those elements there. There was, a, there, there was that spirit of nationalism during the Elizabethan period. But this, in this uh, uh, um, uh, period, we find that it was a more um, uh, transnational movement. It was, it was uh, across our Europe and that those boundaries of nationalism, they were weakening and there was more of a universal brotherhood that we find gradually emerging during this, uh, during this period. And uh, why um, um, Wordsworth wrote uh, preface to the lyrical ballad, the reason was that uh, he wanted to uh, tell the readers that the kind of poetry that is written in this uh, lyrical ballads was different from the kind of poetry that was being written during the neoclassical. So in, in a sense he was uh, he was announcing the the uh, advent of a new kind of poetry. That is why he he had to write the preface, and he mentions it uh, clearly in his uh, preface. So I think that was important for him that he should uh, write this. And by doing that, he was elucidating his concept of poetry, and that is why he had to give or he gives a definition of uh, poetry that poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, and then of course recollected mm -hmm. and tranquility mm -hmm. and the other elements that he associates with this process, is mm -hmm. four stage uh, process that we talked about earlier also. So. Uh, it was necessary for him to give his idea of the process of poetic composition and what he thought of uh, poetry. I think that is important for... So he uh, used his preface to introduce his ideas to yeah, the common definitely. people. Yeah. So it would not be wrong to say that Wordsworth was the first critic of his poetry. Uh, yeah, in a sense, yeah, yeah, he 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 was the he can be considered to be the first critic of his poetry because he thought that he was uh, he was giving a concrete uh, shape to his idea of poetry. Mm -hmm. But actually, some people also have observed that there is a difference between what he uh, what he theorizes in in the preface and what he practices in his. Oh, poetry. There is a contradiction. There is a contradiction in it. But when we analyze the poetry and uh, uh, when we look at it closely we find that there is a uh, there is a organic unity between the two mm 
and sometimes his ideas have been misunderstood or have been uh, understood in a different context because this definition yes, has yes. been you know uh, quoted yeah. out of its original context yeah. as we and have discussed yeah. and then he he gives us his ideas about the subject matter of poetry for instance he says subject matter of poetry should be rustic life um, life is has lived in the in the countryside. So we imagine a, so a, a Wordsworth writing a poem on solitary reaper. But in the earlier period, an Alexander Pope writes a, a poem about a, 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 a city a fashionable girl, Belinda, for instance, in the, the rape, rape of, of the lock. lock. So a, an Alexander Pope can be can be visualized as writing poetry about the toilet toiletries of a young fashionable girl but a Wordsworth cannot be visualized in doing that. He would write about a solitary reaper. So that and then he says diction of poetry should be um, um, rural or language of poetry is not different from language of common man. Common. These are the points that I think he elaborated in his preface. So we can summarize it this way. Okay. Thanks. Thank you sir. Yeah.